We all know that it is hard to cycle uphill and that it is easy to cycle downhill. But how can this be explained? To explain this phenomena, we need to be aware of the normal force. Let me give an example. When you cycle on the road, the force of gravity is pulling you and your bicycle down. Although this force pulling you downwards, you do not sink into the ground. This is because the ground is holding you. In other words, the ground is resisting the pull of gravity. This resisting force is called the normal force. When you draw this normal force, it is always exactly perpendicular to the ground. When the ground is flat, the normal force is equal but opposite to the gravity force. The gravity force is cancelled out by the normal force. In other words, the vertical resultant force is zero. This explains perfectly that there is no vertical movement. The bicycle does not move upwards or downwards in this situation. Another way of drawing the normal force holding this bike up is at the wheels where the bike touches the ground. But keep in mind that the total normal force upwards is equal and opposite to the gravity force. Let's see if it's clear to you. This box is placed on a table. The force of gravity pulling the box down is 45 newtons. What is the magnitude and direction of the normal force? Did you answer 45 newtons upwards? Well done! Now let's have a look at the situation of cycling downhill. Also in this case, the gravity force is pulling you and your bicycle downwards. The gravity force is responsible for two things. It is helping you moving downwards easier and it keeps you on the slope. In other words, you do not sink into the ground, but also do not fly off the slope. Because the gravity force has an effect into two directions, it is useful to split the gravity force into two component forces the collateral gravity component force and the perpendicular gravity component force. Now it is handy to use a body mass diagram where you can draw all the forces from the middle. By drawing two guidelines parallel to the slope and two guidelines perpendicular to the slope, the two component forces can be drawn easily. Do you see that the guidelines go through the start and the end point of the gravity force? The collateral gravity component force is an assisting force which helps the movement downhill. The perpendicular gravity component force is pushing you against the slope. The slope holds you up with a normal force which is equal but opposite to the perpendicular gravity component force. On a slope, the normal force is equal but opposite to the perpendicular gravity component force. Is this clear to you? Give it a try. This box is placed on a slope of 10 degrees. The force of gravity pulling the box down is 45 newtons. Draw this situation into your notebook. Use the scale 1 cm for 10 newtons and add the component forces. Did you find that the collateral gravity component force is 7.8 newtons? And did you also find that the perpendicular gravity component force is 44.3 newtons? Excellent! Another question. Do you know what the magnitude and direction is of the normal force? Draw this in your notebook. Good job! The direction is upwards, perpendicular to the slope and equal in size as the perpendicular gravity component force. 44.3 newtons. One more. If you increase the angle of the slope, which component force would get bigger? 
A. The perpendicular gravity component force B. The collateral gravity component force or C. Both gravity component forces The correct answer is B. Now you are not only able to explain the physics behind the fact that you gain speed going downhill, but are also able to calculate the extra force helping you. Naturally, this also explains why cycling uphill is heavy, because in this situation, the extra force is opposing your movement. Thanks for watching.